Hey everybody, and welcome to the next commercial breakdown on uh, my previous Flame user group um, where I got to present um, two examples of some work. Um, one that was just a regular old uh, projection kind of 2D stills to life, and one that was about uh, my, my practical use of motion vectors. Um, and that's what this breakdown is going to be about, is my two examples that I did at the user group on motion vectors. So this first example is... Um, available courtesy of uh, The Vanity. So thanks to Sean and uh, the, the wonderful folks at The Vanity for allowing me to show this. Um, and it was, in this particular case, removing this uh, this copy that was on this little girl's shirt. And um, motion vectors ended up being the perfect uh, route for this. Now, one thing to note is this is uh, pretty high res. It's 3.5K pretty much, 16 float, and um, not super quick when... Um, when working with it. So um, if we go over here, um, you can see, so again, it was just giving it a lot. Um, things to look out for this particular shot was um, we had the lens flare passing over the front um, and there was enough happening with the shirt to warrant um, the use of vectors because I don't know about you guys, but I've done several, anytime I work with something that is slow-mo and again, this the end product for this was sped up and you know, you can hide behind the speed ups, but anytime, anytime I'm working on something that is super, super slow mo, more than this, like crazy, crazy phantom as well included, I feel like you can't tell the quality of the tracks. And the tracks just, they look great, but because it's so slow, it deteriorates over time. And then by the time the track's done, it's shifted so much, but you don't notice it and pick it up. So that's where I've actually found, because um, the other example I've done too is a slow mo shot. And that's where I've actually found found uh, motion vectors and clean up using motion vectors to be really successful because you know it locks because it's using the footage you know what I mean like it can't not lock um, it can't just kind of lose track like anything else so that aside um, everything was done in here um, and again this this particular shot was pre-rendered and uh, I think it was about half an hour to render I think um, I mean, it's a long shot though. I mean, this is 15 seconds, so which is fair enough and it's high res. Um, the other thing to note too is this is hidden and uncached. It's because I upgraded this, um, I converted this from a 2018.2 to 2019.2. So that's that's why, but in general, I will pre-render the high high res stuff and I use the projectors mat output um, to speed this up. And again, it was all comped. And if we look at um, just the result really quick to see what it's kind of doing, press play. You see, we got some obvious color shift and we've got to kind of color that in and kiss the lens flare back in. But all of that pretty much, besides filling that back in, all of that is for free. Little bits we have to kind of fix there. But again, this is where this becomes awesome. So again, I, I got this set up in my context. I'm gonna go to Spacebar 1. And back at the start is where that was looking kind of bad. And again, just keyframing the gamma. I'm pretty sure that's all I did was gamma, yeah. Just little, little kisses in. Bypass that. Just little kisses. And again, um, this first one, if we go here, this was just using an open shape. Um, so it wasn't closed, but just open and then um, sp spreading it out. And this is just to kind of soften off that that weirdness there. And that helped a lot. And then this is our just our fillback rotor. And this was kind of uh, tracked and then manual, um, probably mostly manual from memory. Um, just because again, that kind of, uh, that the crappy kind of shape you have to work with when you do that. And then um, again, uh, frame 105, which is back here. And this was our, our lens flare. And this is just where I kind of grabbed that, grabbed that little bit there. And this is where I tried tracking, it didn't work. And I ended up just hand keyframing it and screening it in. And if I just scrub through, you see it just, it works a charm. You don't even notice. And that's, that's what we wanted um, for this. And again, if we go to the output which is here and we look at it let's go actually to the start and then press play you see minimal effort again the the effort was watching the slow progress of the render bar but you know what make yourself a coffee get, get your game face on to come back and it's all it is is roto and some kind of finesse keyframes as opposed to like you'll see in the next example what would be kind of disastrous so that's the first example. Now, the final example for this is um, is kind of the best case scenario for this uh, type of shot. So 
I got full screen and then uh, so this is before and after so obviously kind of sign replacement stuff that's what you're used to and then uh, all this branding on this little girl which again it's why we have jobs um, so this one if we play this back and I'll just go full there we go um, see this one these bottom ones I ended up just doing normal planar because planar tracks and painting out is fine because we got a bit of a perspective shift which is fine right that's what you expect okay yeah I can planar that out same with this paint some out and then you know get away with what you want but besides this strap bit too all that intersecting stuff look at this we've got if we did do a planar shape we do a shape just for this area because then you see that because it is connected to her shoulder and then it's her her gut and chest that's going we've got a pivot here and a pivot here so no matter what you do for this, you still have to track that and then track that separate and try and kiss in something, which is not fun and not practical. And a prime example of why this makes sense. And again, kind of slowed down. So again, a great example of this because anything that's kind of, again, I've done stuff that's quicker too, but it just seems to be great with slow-mo stuff for me. That's just my experience. So again, um, if we jump in, so this one was, I've got Alt 2. And again, this one's a lot kind of quicker because it's such low res. Um, and then we'll just turn off the compare. Um, so this is just the, the pass for the signs, as you'd expect, some blur and then regrain. And then just this is just kissing back in her hair stuff. And then this final bit was the, um, the, uh, the highlight details, as much as I could put back in um, without screwing myself. The next one is the, so the paint for this was done for her on frame one so again that's all that's the extent of the paint i did it's not it's not great but again it's i i had to do this in an hour and a half i think so it is what it is now this again is it was upgraded from a previous version but just to give you a gauge on an idea of how long this will take i'll undo that hide that and go to analysis clear make sure because it's not even cleared and then i'll go to cache range so let this do its thing um now, the one thing to note too is um, for this shot, I could have used the ROI, um, which is you use ROI, press F8. Um, I could have just done it isolated on that girl's particular area and that can speed it up. But say for the, the shot that I used, the other shot from the, um, the vanity shot, that is not as easily done because you can't keyframe the ROI, which is unless I'm missing something horribly, horribly wrong, you can't keyframe it, which just is insanity to me but anyway that said i have got a hack that i'm going to show you guys in another tutorial coming up um, that shows a kind of workaround method for that um, but yeah you can't do that so no matter what it's just going to be slow um, but it can be sped way way up if you um if you use this hack that i'll show in another tutorial so again from this i think that took about a minute to kind of do that which isn't too bad and then if we look at the results of this i just need to re because you see we've recached we just need to re um, from the projector we need to clear that and then add it and now if we scrub you see it travels with it perfectly like just it just takes all that perfectly all that stuff there that would be a pain and it's not um, and again these other ones were just um, those are those guys and these are just simple G masks if we look you see and again for my G masks, I generally don't use skew in perspective. I just usually keep it on these. And sometimes I'll even have it like that. If it's like something that's confusing, but it should work and it works. Um, this one I did use skew, but it's a rare occasion I'll use skew because sometimes it's just, it just gets so out of whack when you use those values. Um, and then this is again, just um, fill back on the hands. And that's about it. And there was just some kind of little, you know, little bits at the bottom that you want to clean up. And there are bits around here that I kind of, finesse if I undo and we look at the before and after you see it does a pretty good job again for the amount of time this had and for just what that does for that area there is phenomenal and again like I was not the most trust trusting person of oh we got motion vectors now that's great and um for what it does it's it's been great and I've used it a lot so that's going to be it for this um, commercial breakdown, guys. Um, stay tuned for more tutorials.